Welcome back to our IT support job readiness and career knowledge videos. So far we have covered three videos. One was the introduction and talking about the basic skills that you need to know. Then we went into competency and then we wanted to know about the levels and different type of titles. But then we went to more detail about job descriptions and titles again and the requirements and how people put these descriptions. What are the requirements? What do they expect? expect and certain things are just true and and just you know wish lists and things like that so today we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about day-to-day -day duties but most uh, likely we're going to talk about in-demand skills now because of these skills people will consider you an IT professional specifically help desk or technical support side so what are these skills so when you see something like this in your resume or somebody asks you that okay why are you a help desk why do we call you even a help desk because you're different than a normal user right a normal users know certain things in a computer they may be technical they may not be technical but that's not their job even very small thing if they can fix they're not um, maybe they may not be able to fix for example if somebody knows okay i know how to download a software uh, and i can run it and i can put it on the computer but in the company they don't have those type of rights so even that becomes your job even that other person knows this skill they know this stuff you still need to do it because that's part of your job so here there are some uh, some of the things that are just common like diagnose computer errors and provide technical support now this is not something common for a normal user this is going to be requiring you to know this stuff and we're going to talk about all of this stuff with when we start our quiz on the bottom um, and I'll let you decide which one is correct just to test yourself so here troubleshoot software hardware and network issues train end users how to set up and use new technologies I want to go back to this troubleshoot software hardware and network issues now remember troubleshooting software hardware and network issues these are all again basically is based on what level of issue so we're going to talk about software troubleshoot software that doesn't mean you're going to have to troubleshoot a code inside the software that means you just need to install the software repair the software if it's having issue maybe try on our different machines finding out what's the problem with that software like that at the very basic level but if the software itself is having an issue that will not be you you're just going to have to assign this a vendor or maybe a software developer hardware now of course if there's an issue with a let's say Dell uh, you know um, CPU or maybe a monitor and let's say there is a specific thing that's broken inside the monitor you may be able to fix it but in most cases when you're doing a help desk job a lot of companies they don't require you to just go ahead and uh, you know open every single thing up like 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 a real hardware shop they don't expect that kind of skills from you in some places they may but most likely this is not the case you will have to call the vendor or maybe whoever you have the contract with they will send their technician like Dell will send their technician they'll still switch that you know piece and they'll give you the invoice or whatever however it is uh, you know set up in your company in network issues yeah you will be going into the computer and fixing a adapter let's say for example um, the the cable is not plugged in correctly or maybe it's not getting a right IP address because somebody f uh, forgot to change the static IP address to dynamic or maybe it needs to be on static so now you see how I'm saying static dynamic putting all that stuff. these are this is basic knowledge by the way a lot of people may think that okay that's what are you talking about is this something advanced no that's the basic knowledge that people expect from you from that entry-level jobs and if you don't know this basics IP config how to get into device manager stuff like that is is too basic and people think that you should know this either from college education either from your self-paced learning either from platforms like ours like you know you go and actually learn things hands-on so this is kind of like stuff that you need to know to be able to be to be able to compete with people now because people are working different ways to learn these skills to be honest it's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a good suggestion for me to just say okay if you don't know this stuff that I'm explaining to you right now then I'm I'm leading you to stress even though you may land the job you're gonna still find issues with your career and you're gonna have a stressful time 
So then train end user, of course, is basic stuff. Backup, restore organizations, data, files, and systems. Uh, most likely, you're not going to be setting up the system, meaning uh, in most cases, the, the technical people in the support area, especially the entry level, they don't set up most of the infrastructure stuff. For example, if there is a Nectar directory, it's been set up by your sysadmin and the whole networking is done by network engineers. You just have to go and actually manage it. And in, in terms of managing, you're troubleshooting the basics. So just like that, backup and restore is going to be one of like a solution or technology they are going to be using. They will have it implemented on servers or cloud and you're just going to have to know how to get into that system to restore a file because a user is complaining about deleting a file from one specific area and they may say I just worked on it for three hours and I accidentally deleted it. Now how would you recover that? Do you even have a solution? So that's going to be like your uh, you know, take on that because if you don't have a solution from that end, from that infrastructure side, there was, there was this was not managed that way, and of course you cannot do anything. You will have to just use your knowledge on a operating system level. For example, getting into the computer, uh, Windows 10, and see if the word have auto saved it or stuff like that. So you see again, you still need to know this knowledge, right? So now coming back to install, configure, upgrade PC software, operating systems. Um, this is more complicated than this now because when you go to the companies, they don't have one or two operating systems, they have multiple. So you got to know about then skills like imaging and things like that. So you see certain things are going to become more complex. And when people know this stuff, this is where people uh, break that mentality of do I really need to work somewhere to, to be able to get a job because I don't have experience. This is a very, very big area for a lot of new people where they get stuck because they say, I don't have experience. Now, what is experience? Experience is this stuff. When you know this stuff, you know certain things from a very sequential way. Somebody teach you this stuff. Of course, that's experience right there. Now, you will never be able to replace an experience of you working directly hands on somewhere. But let me tell you, if you do this smartly, and not the not the hard way the hard way is when you think that I'm gonna go to the job then I'm gonna spend like a year or two and then I'm gonna learn all this stuff on the job and then I'm gonna become experienced and then I'm gonna apply of course you just wasted a lot of time the reason I say that that a lot of companies they will have certain setup and that setup may be just very specific in your career, very small things. And you may be doing those things for years repetitively. So you may not get a chance to learn what other people are learning outside from courses or real world training like ours, because that's what matters. If you go to these jobs, these advanced jobs or any other IT jobs, they're looking for a person who knows this stuff. And if they know, if you, even if you have, if you didn't have experience and you tell them that, look, I have went through these courses, I know all this stuff that is here and you can prove it to them from your resume, from maybe test a technical test. There you go. That's how people get jobs in this platform. And people have proven that many, many times. And at the last uh, you know, slides of this quiz, I'm going to show the success stories. That's going to boost your confidence. We, we, I'm going to show you a lot of stuff that what people have been through and they have gotten jobs and with no experience at all. So that shouldn't be a worry at all. Clean and repair computers, hardware, such as keyboards and printers, remote IT help those technicians provide uh, technical support over the phone. They provide a specialized software to take control. A very big thing right here, like, you know, they most, since we're in this situation right now, you all know what situation we're in. Everybody's remotely working. So what is the best and top skills that people are going to be asking? That's going to be remoting into the computers. And people are going to ask you questions, not just by, oh, do you know how to use Zoom to get into the computer? In IT, we use specific applications. There are managed applications. There are uh, company VPN level applications, SCCM, you know, uh, Zuho, there's so many, BombGuard, I guess, there's so many different type of applications that you're going to need to uh, basically know this stuff. And then again, last one, the big one is that just operating system skills, you know, if you don't know how to use Windows 10 operating system, then a user is complaining and they're using every single thing on top of that operating system, even if it's a cloud-based operating system, they're still using the web browser. So what if the web browser was having an issue? A user is not going to fix that. You still need to know how to fix the web browser, how to fix the issues with that. And that's just one example. If they're using Team Viewer, sorry, they're using Teams, they're still using an application on the desktop. 
Um, and if they're using, let's say, for example, Word desktop version, they're using that on the desktop. Even if they're using a web-based Office 365 version of Outlook and you know, you're know you doing some administration, you're still using a operating system to get to that uh, application. And the, and the other things are like smaller things like mobile stuff. That's not too big concern, but desktop OS level uh, system skills is your core basically and then this is where I like the A plus side of it if you know or if you have the platform like ours who really get into the A plus of the real world side like hands on stuff not just talking about paper certification over here and anybody other than our platform if somebody else is teaching A plus in a very hands on fashion they add some things that we are adding like third uh, you know, the, the on-demand skills like imaging, ticketing, which you're going to come across in one of my next slides. Uh, yeah, that's a good training then, to be honest. You should ask them, okay, you know, it, after this training, can I take on job description at least at 40%? And if they say yes, and you can feel that, then I think that's a good training. Um, ours is way more than 40%, so you're going to find that out. Now, coming to this quiz, I'm going to give you a few seconds to to basically decide which one goes where. So if you were going to see .pdf file, what do you really think this is? Because this is such a common file and this is such a common software and extension that a user also knows and you as a technical person should definitely know. Why is that? Because people will call you that I cannot open my PDF. It, it opens up in some kind of other application. So what's going on? I do have Adobe or I don't have Adobe. So I already gave my answer. So what would you do like over here? When you look at the PDF, what is that? So since I already gave my answer, of course, you should have known this. This is an Adobe application. By looking at this test, there is no, this is such a clean cut thing. Like even a user would probably know this and say, okay, this is related to Adobe. I'm just going to put it right here. Now, control panel. Okay. When you look at control panel, a normal user probably will not guess this, or they may know it, they may not know it. Some people are technical, some people are not that technical. But you, as a technical person, as an IT professional, you cannot go wrong with this one. So you first have to see what, what answers do you have. I mean, most of these answers are, uh, there are cer certain answers are rep uh, repeated. So by looking at control panel, to be honest, I will not even think twice by looking at this. Okay, I don't have any other specific answer on this. Um, basically, it says control the working environment of user accounts. So, okay, you may say, hey, you know what? Is is it this one? So if I look at, if I put on, on this, is okay, it says control the working environment of user accounts and computer accounts. It seems like a control panel, but it's not. That's, that's still not the right answer. So you're going to have to then say, okay, you know what? This is just a built-in feature. That's the only thing that I can see. Okay, now here you go. You got the group policy right here. You see now, I'm, I'm basically talking about some things that you should just look at it and you, okay, that is, there you go. Event Viewer is actually a built-in feature. Okay, I see something like uh, Task Manager. Okay, that seems like a built-in feature. Then I see blue screen of death. Is that a built-in feature? Do I have more or do I have a better answer for that? So if you look at this right here, okay, developed by Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. I go, I go over here, is an application, can install, and it says an application used to transferring. Do I even have anything else? If I don't have anything else, no error related, this is an error that gets created by blah, blah, blah. No, it's, it's just going to be still a built-in feature from Microsoft because it's still coming from that operating system, right? But if I say, let's say Microsoft Word web version. Now you see, this is where then you need to know that attractive skills. So what I mean by this is that you may start doing a plus type of certification or some other courses where they're going to be very much targeting and operating system skills which is a very important and a core skills to learn that's why we start with a plus as well in our training but like i said the job descriptions are way more than operating system specific skills you got to know more than that to be able to compete with other people who have experience and most of these entry-level jobs people 
somehow expect that you should know this stuff because that's what they want to hire that's they want people to be working quickly in the company so now if you look at this web version where would you place it so if you come all the way down it says right here is a cloud-based application provided by microsoft so you see it's clearly that if you knew that what is microsoft web version this is basically the office 365 side of microsoft and if if they were using office 365 i can guarantee you they will ask you interview questions on office 365. then similarly active directory if you're brand new to this you probably say okay what is active directory i don't even know about it or you may say i heard about it a lot but i don't know too much about it but as soon as you start working in the company and they're using active directory which most likely they are going to be then of course you're going to get hit with all these very quick tickets like i lo i locked myself i need to change my last name i need to change my department um, there's an issue going on and i need to join this computer to a domain and all of this stuff is under Active Directory and Active Directory is a core skill when you work in a business environment because everything is connected through that Active Directory and the access and everything works through Active Directory. So of course then you needed to know how to match this with you know uh, different type of things and similarly I'm not going to do the whole thing because that's what you're going to be doing in this quiz but similarly there are, are extra things like group policy. Now a lot of people when they are experienced they may say uh, and when they're working in a company, like I said, there's a difference between a trainer training people in many different situations, and then there's a difference between a, a in, an IT professional who's been working in an, in, a, in an industry for a long time, but in one or two areas. They may think, based on their experience, because when I touched group policy, I was a sysadmin. But the problem is that if somebody don't teach you group policy, then the job uh, stress for the help this person is way more why I'm gonna give you an example so let's talk about something let's say when you go to the company and you log in to the computer and a user call you and a user basically says that I'm a brand new user uh, but I don't know the length of the password or I don't know I lock myself out and I don't know how many times should I try again to try this password that I know but you can reset it for me then or more things like for example you're double clicking on a software and it says that this software has been blocked by your system as administrator using group policy now you see certain things you don't need to know in advance just like Active Directory we are telling people that you should know definitely know about it as a, as a technician to 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 gain that interview call and make your resume look good then you need to learn these skills at the very basic level. It's just so you can make your job easy, just so you can put an impression that you know more than just basic, just so your resume look good. This is the proper way, uh, and I say the smart way, why people are getting jobs in this platform and in any other places who, who uses this technique. And people who are gonna not gonna go through this stuff and think that this is too much for them or they, they get scared out of this stuff, so of course you're gonna be losing chances and you may land a job even without knowing this i will probably get a comments no i didn't know nothing about hccm we sphere group policy none of that stuff and i got the job that's good for you but a lot of people are not in that stage and then how much time did it take you to learn this stuff uh on your own you still needed to know this stuff you still needed to know this stuff one way or another way either from the job or either from your trainings and then you became better and you became at that point that you can make this this uh this call or this comment that you know you feel confident about this stuff because you know you know you know this stuff now so we are reversing things in a little bit different way we're going to keep things basic but you still need to know about it to make your job easy and to make your 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 career development um, uh, uh, grow faster than just going out to the job and spending four, two years or three years and then making these decisions because you know these things. Things are changing fast. People are going to cloud left and right. Things are hybrid now, and we don't have the time to to get involved in this area where you say that I'm going to spend this much time and then do something. Uh, this stuff is becoming basics every day and you just need to use a common sense that okay you know you see how group policy was heavily involved in determining that how many times you need to put the password how many times you need to put the password to get locked out so if you knew that knowledge and at least knew or understand group policy you would have no issues with this type of calls 
So now you 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 are better. You're uh, you're mentally better too. Your your stress level is not that much because you know how to troubleshoot a lot of issues. So the next question is going to be, what are some other things that is going to be the key in your uh, you know career development, less stress management, and then also getting the jobs or moving fast in this career is definitely other things are involved. Um, don't get overwhelmed, by the way. Like I said, it depends on the training that you take. The way we train, we basically go from operating system skills, hands-on practice, and then we move on to these real-world skills like group policy, active directory, in a step-by-step -step format. So then at the end, after two to three years of this program that we have, you basically become like a, a very good technical person, even though the confidence is still going to be the issue, and that's something you're just going to have to, you know, watch us talk to us uh you know perform different techniques and that's that's something that's a part of this whole program but again this is something that's very important and that's why i took more time on this video because i wanted to tell people that it's not about just knowing windows 10 operating system it's not about just you you uh you know dropping a a virtual box on your machine and you're so happy that you installed an operating system for the first time uh, i'm not saying that you shouldn't be happy but i'm saying that there are more to it in this career and just so you have less stressful time please pay some attention over here and and use your common sense and and keep watching this quiz please watch this whole videos in this playlist till the end and i'm sure at the end you are going to be a different person from the slide one thank you so much